Hello everyone. Welcome to my YouTube channel. So in this particular session, I'll talk about the recursion in depth. Okay. So as we all know that recursion is a very important concept in DSA. And if you don't know recursion, or if you don't have any idea about recursion, then you can't understand the algorithms like divide and conquer, the dynamic programming, the tree based data structure. So all in all, what I want to say is that recursion plays a very important role whenever we are talking about data structure algorithms. Okay. So what we come to do in this particular session is that we will talk about that. What are the things which are required for a recursion? Okay. And what are the major preliminary prerequisites for this particular concept? I'll talk about that. But before that, first of all, we should be aware about that. What is recursion? What is the meaning of a recursion? So whenever I'm saying recursion, the simple meaning is that the meaning of the recursion says that when a function is calling itself. So recursion says that whenever, whenever any function you will see is calling itself, right? Directly, it may, it may call directly or indirectly then it is something which we say that, okay, the recursion is happening here. That is the very first important thing that you should know. For example, for example, you are having some function named, uh, uh, maybe you are doing a code of a factorial. Okay. So here you are passing some number in and inside this number, inside this uh, factorial function, somewhere writing the statements when you are writing the logic, Somewhere when you are writing a logic, you are calling that particular function again. I'll give you the proper implementation for this uh, same example by saying that it will be something like this n into n minus one. So here, if you will see, you will try to understand that this function named factorial, which I have defined in the upper part in my Python code, I am recalculating or I am recalling this function again. But yes, with different set of parameters. And that is the simple meaning of recursion. Okay. So, okay, we are, we will be able to understand that, okay, what recursion is. I hope now, if suppose in a code, if suppose you will see something where there is a function calling, which is exactly the same as the function name, it means you will get to understand that, okay, recursion is happening here. Now, as I told you that this recursion, the application of this particular concept, if you will get to know pretty well. So the application of recursion, you will appreciate that in almost each and every concept, you will see that this recursion is very much beneficial. For example, you will see in the later sections that all the applications of divide and conquer is completely based on the concept of recursion where basically what is happening is that we are dividing the major problem into sub problems. This is where the concept of divide and conquer came into picture that we are dividing one major problem into the various sub problems in such a way that we know that first of all divide it and then we will try to conquer the sub problems and then we'll reach to the final outcome. That is how mainly complete broader concept of divide and conquer will work. Apart from that, whatsoever be the tree based data structures that we have tree based data structure, th those particular things completely run on the basis of this recursion concept. Apart from that, one of the favorite topic of many, uh, you know, uh, many students is dynamic programming, even the challenging also. So that is also completely understandable only when you know the idea of the recursion. And that's the only reason I chose this topic to uh, make you guys clear before covering any other topic in DSA, right? Even any of the competitive programming problem that we will solve in our future sessions on YouTube, you will see that maximum number of time I'm using the recursion. So if you don't know this particular concept, then obviously you will face a lot of trouble at that time. But what, what is she doing? I'm not able to understand. So please try to pay attention in this particular session. That's the only reason that's why I'm saying that recursion is very much important if we are talking about DSA, right? So these are the few things uh, which I want to st tell you to give you the motivation that why you should study this recursion concept pretty well in case of a DSA. 
now whenever we are covering a recursion there are few important things or i would say few major prerequisites that you should be aware of the very first important thing is that you should be aware about the recurrence relation you should be aware about the recurrence relation why because recurrence relation is what will be formed when you will write any recursive code and there are so many ways to solve the recurrence relation that again you should be aware of there are so many ways to go for or to solve any kind of recurrence relation for example you should be aware of what masters theorem all about for example you should be aware of what is uh, you know a uh, uh, recursive tree approach all about you should know what is substitution method all about so these are the few important things that you should be aware of whenever we are talking about the recursion so if you have if you don't have any any idea about what is the, what all these things meaning so i will suggest to go to my playlist on the aniron youtube channel there i have clearly explained these concepts so you can just refer there and then you can come here uh, and you can see that how basically we can solve the problems related to the recursion okay apart from this apart from uh, knowing about that recurrence relation you should know in recursion whenever we are writing any sort of code you will you will observe that one important thing is the base case condition base case condition what does that mean the simple meaning of base case condition is that that whenever we are writing a code whenever we are writing any recursive code we need any stopping point there so that my code will stop at that point of time whenever it will reach to that particular condition so that is something which we are saying is a base case condition so whenever you are writing any recursive code if there is no base case condition what does that mean the simple meaning is that that, that at that point of time your code will run infinite number of times and that is something which is not an algorithm itself right so the important condition of a good algorithm is that it should stop after some moment that is what we we already understood right so this is the base case condition that you have to be take care of whenever we write you are writing a recursive solution another important thing is that you will observe the concept of recursive tree here whenever we are solving any kind of solution which is completely based on recursion you will observe that i will always write the recursive tree in the next session i'll show you with one example maybe we will take merge sort and i'll show you that how basically that complete recursive tree will be formed with the help of which we will be able to understand that how internally recursion will work completely broader understanding complete good picture i will try to give you in the next session at that point of time you will be able to understand that how basically that recursive tree will be formed up that is the another important thing apart from that whenever we are calling a recursion so we need some memory space which is basically used to store those function calls because those function calls are repeatedly calling again and again so at that point of time a stack data structure will be used to store the function calls so the major importance or application of this data structure is to is to store the function calls in the stack date in the recursion uh, concept so whenever you are applying any any recursive code whenever you are writing any recursive code always keep this thing in mind that some sort of extra space is always used to in order to store those function calls how basically that is happening again when i will create that recursive tree at that point of time you will get a better idea i'll show you that how basically the uh, function calls will be stored inside the stack data structure whenever i am saying stack it simply means that a concept of last in first out is implemented in that particular data structure means the function call which is which will be called at the very end will be the first which will be out that is the next important thing which everyone should be aware of so recurrence relation about the base case condition recursive tree the stack based data structure and all the applications related to uh, the recursion are we have discussed so these are the few important things which might be giving you the motivation that why you should study this recursive concept and one more important thing that whenever you are writing any recursive code 
corresponding to that there always exists some iterative approach people usually get confused what is the meaning of iterative approach and what is the meaning of recursive approach recursive approach i just talk about that whenever a function is calling itself for example this factorial inside that that factorial is calling again it means recursion is happening what is the meaning of iterative approach at that point of time you are using a loops to solve the same problem for example to solve the factorial problem either i can do with the help of a recursion or i can simply do with the help of a function uh, for loop or maybe while loop so when i am saying iterative approach the meaning of iterative approach is that that inside the function another function is not calling or same function is not calling iterative approach meaning is that that we are using the concept of loops we are using the concepts of loops here now what i am saying is that for every recursive solution there exists a iterative approach but then why we are using recursion even though recursion is using some extra space called stack but iterative approach will not use that space so why we are using recursion at that point of time because in future sessions you will see that whenever we are dealing with some hard level problems the approach of recursion is quite easy quite clean to write the code as comparable to iterative approach after the sessions maybe after few uh, 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 months of spending a, a lot of time in doing recursive codes you will be easily able to understand that recursion is so simple as comparable to applying any kind of iterative approach and even the number of lines of code that you supposed to write in case of a recursion is quite lesser as comparable to the iterative approach so that's the important reason but you should know what is the difference between iterative and the recursive approach here i will give you the same example here i have already written one simple code here if you will see i have i want to find out the factorial of a number so what is the meaning of a factorial of a number i hope everyone knows for example i am saying that what is the what is 5 factorial so it is nothing but is equals to 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 into 1 or in other words i can say it is equals to 120 this is the factorial of a 5 similarly we can evaluate for any any factorial now this same code can be written in terms of recursion or it can be written in terms of iteration so now how basically we can solve it with the help of iterative approach meaning i am using some simple for loop here so here if you will see i am just uh, let me try to go for 5 and here i am calling the function which is factorial iterative approach which is taking that n parameter and then if you will go inside this method definition it's very simple result we are defining as 1 if the value of the number is 1 so what we want to do is that we want to start from 1 and go until 5 right this is what i want right for example the same example if you will pick up 5 factorial for the iterative approach so here what we are saying is that we are saying start from 1 start from 1 so the value of i will start from 1 here and then it will go until 2 3 4 and 5 inside that what we are saying is that result multiply i so what is the result result value was 1 so it will be 1 into 2 into 3 into 4 into 5 i think this equation and the above one is exactly the same so the answer will be equals to 120 this is the way the way we can do with the help of a iterative approach here if you will observe i am not calling the same function method name inside the method definition that is the iterative approach same thing we can do with the help of a recursion how by simply passing that if the value of the n is 0 or 1 return me the one if it is less than 0 it means the factorial will be minus 1 it indicates that it's a negative number so factorial will not be possible otherwise now try to observe the next this line line number 9 try to pay complete attention here here what we are doing is that we are saying 5 multiply we are calling the same function name with the different set of parameter by passing n minus 1 so now here what will happen is that initially the value of the value of n is what we are passing as 5 right so when the value of n is equals to 5 so here what is happening the value of n is equals to 5 so when uh, what we are saying 5 multiply with same function name which is uh, suppose f is the function name that we have 
and here we are saying n minus 1 which is equals to 4. Now again the same function will be called and now instead of passing 5 we are passing 4. So what it will return 4 into f of 3. Now similarly here also same function will be called but now instead of passing 4 we are passing 3. So it will return 3 into f of 2. Then what will happen? This function will return 2 into f of 1. And now when 1 will come, we reach to the base case condition. This is something which we are saying is a base case condition where my code know that now it should go out of the for, uh, out of the loop because here it can return the value as 1. So here now it will return the value as 1. So I am facing some trouble in writing. Uh, so here it will return the value as 1. So now it should return 2. So 3 into 2 is 6. 6 into 4 is 24. 24 into 5 is 120. So finally 120 will be returned. The same thing, same answer but with some different set of approach. Here this approach is something which we call as recursion. Why? Because here if you will observe the same function we are calling again and again until what point of time? until we reach to a base case condition. What is the base case condition? When the value of n is equals to either 1 or 0, then simply return me the value as 1. That is the base case condition that we have seen. So this is the overall idea behind the recursive approach. So here if I will try to show you, I will try to run this code. So here you will see that you are getting the answer as 120. If I will run this iterative approach also, then, al then also our factorial should be 120 and that is what we are getting. right? using factorial and here it should be using recursive approach. So that is the overall idea behind the recursion. I hope that this video will give you a sense that what is recursion first of all, right? What, how basically we will get to know if there is a code that whether the code is recursive or not. After that we have seen that what are the applications of recursion, why we are studying that after that, we have seen what are the prerequisites of uh, learning the recursion. After that, we have seen that what is the difference between the recursive approach and the iterative approach. And then for every recursive code, we always have that iterative solution. But why still we are, we are using recursion? That is also I have explained you. So I think this is enough for this particular session. In the next session, I'll take one example that is maybe with the help of a merge sort. I'll try to create proper recursive tree and then I'll try to show you that how basically recursion is working internally with the help of that recursive tree and how those function calls will be stored inside the stack data structure. With this, happy learning to all. I hope that this content is pretty much easily, uh, you will be able to grab everything. If suppose you have any sort of doubt, do let me know in the comment section. Till then, bye-bye everyone. See you all in my next upcoming session.